Alright guys, what's going on? It's Shram here, and welcome back to another video I got for you guys today. Today, I am going to be attempting to rebuild the Los Angeles Rams, but before I get into this rebuild at all, I just want to mention something. So, as this car drives by, um, <laughs> if you haven't noticed yet, I'm at home for winter break, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so, if you haven't noticed, I have hit a thousand subscribers on my channel, which is really awesome. I want to thank you guys for that. This isn't going to be me just thanking you for that. This is going to be me announcing something. So, what I think I want to do for a thousand subscribers to do something kind of special but super unoriginal is to have a Q&A because I've never been able to do a Q&A before because I've never I never thought I would get, you know, a, uh, a decent amount of responses, but I feel like now I will actually get an okay amount of responses and we'll be able to actually have a decently long Q&A video. So that's going to be the plan. I have no idea when it'll come out, but what I want you guys to do, if you want to participate, just leave a question, um, you know, in the comments of this video. So instead of me asking for a word, I'm going to try to remember <laughs> not to ask for you guys to comment a word in this one like I have been doing in all my rebuilds. Instead, I'm just going to have you guys comment questions if you want to. Obviously, you're not forced to, but comment any question you want and I will answer them in a Q&A video. I'm not sure how long a hold is open for, but if I already make the Q&A video and I still get questions, then I'll just answer them in the comments. Um, but yeah, do that, or you can actually tweet them at me if you want. It's probably easier just to leave a comment because more people will view this than will actually go to my Twitter. But my Twitter is at Shramwich, it's just my gamer tag, you can see in the top right, but I'll put it on the screen too. And I'll probably leave a link in the description of the video. Might as well promote my Twitter a little bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, leave a comment if you want, and I will try to get to them all in the Q&A video. Probably this week sometime, I'm not entirely sure, I don't want to promise anything. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's get into the rebuild. Obviously, this is the Rams roster. Very good this year, one of the more surprising teams in the NFL for sure, but they actually have one of the best offenses in the NFL, which was the, I think the most surprising part about this entire team, because the Rams have always had a pretty good defense, obviously with like Aaron Donald and Michael Brockers and, and Mark Barron, Alec Ogletree, all those guys, but this offense has been playing phenomenally so far this season. Todd Gurley has been having an insane season, one of the best running backs so far this year. Jared Goff is having an amazing sophomore campaign considering his rookie season was rather dreadful. Uh, their wide receivers are playing really well. Not sure why Sammy Watkins is an 83. I know he hasn't been having like the most insane numbers, but he's been really effective with like, you know, whenever he does catch the ball, he's been very effective with it. Cooper Cup has been a pretty good rookie. I'm not sure how good he was supposed to be coming out of college. I know he's sort of old, yeah, he's 24 but he is actually a pretty decent rookie there. Robert Woods has been having a decent season for the Rams. He's up to an 83. I know he's pretty good, but I don't think he's, he should be the same overall as Sammy Watkins. I don't know, though. This O-line's been playing much better than last year. Uh, obviously, they added Andrew Whitworth, and did they add John Sullivan? I'm not even too sure if they added him or not, but I, I, any, in any event, stuttered there a little bit, but it happens. In any event, John Sullivan will most likely be getting traded. He's 32 years old, and even though Andrew Whitworth is one of the top tackles in the NFL... He is most likely going to get traded, so I'm sorry Rams fans and, and Bengals fans out there who like you, who like Andrew Whitworth, but he's 35. He really doesn't have any chance to develop, and he's probably just going to retire anyway, so I might as well get some value out of him as uh, you know, since I can now. Roger Saffold, how old are you? 29. Whew. Their O-line is good overall-wise, but the age just isn't there. Rob Havenstein, how old are you? 25. Okay, you can chill. You're actually decent. I mean, you're only an 81, but you can at least stay for the first season. The tight end situation is interesting because Tyler Higby is pretty good at being an 83, only having one year of experience. He's not bad, but Gerald Everett's our rookie. But on the defensive side, this is where the team should have better overall players. I'm actually not sure if that's true or not, but LaMarcus Joyner has been having a very good season. He's a 90 overall. Does he have any development? Normal. All right. I think Alec Ogletree should have a higher overall than a 78. Maybe he's not playing well this season. I don't know. I feel like he's always been super consistent with his with his like tackle numbers and stuff. Connor Barwin's here. I forgot what this guy's first name is, but Abukum, Abukum. I can't pronounce that. I don't know. I don't think it's Abukum. That sounds really funny. It's probably like Abukam, Abukum. I don't know. Who knows? He's a rookie. He'll probably get some playing time for the first season. Robert Quinn's up to right outside linebacker over here. He will most likely get traded, being 27. 27 with Quick, I mean, he is a very good player on the Rams, but he's 82. He's only an 82 overall, and he's just going to go down from here, so I'm probably going to trade him. Their corners are decent. Is this... No, it's not Corey Webster, is it? Kayvon Webster. Corey Webster is another corner, I think. Kayvon Webster is actually decent. 26. 
years old isn't bad at all. Tremaine Johnson, I know you get paid a lot, so maybe you'll be leaving. He's a 27, he's 27 years old, I don't know. But Aaron Donald, of course, is staying. Michael Brockers is staying. Doesn't he play, like, nose? Isn't this a 3-4? I'm almost certain this is a 3-4. Uh, but anyway, this guy, John Johnson, only 21 years old as a rookie, 82 overall. That dude is phenomenal. It looks more of a linebacker, if I'm honest, though. 85 speed? What's his block shed all about? 56. Maybe he's not more of a linebacker. I was going to say, if you had decent block shed, you can probably play him a linebacker. Anyway, yeah, this is the team. Uh, I think it's decent. Is this Ethan Westbrooks? Is that your name? Yeah, Ethan Westbrooks. Okay, I don't know. I'm just going to get into some trades here. I actually saw in someone's comment section recently that Jalen Collins is a free agent. I'd never heard of this. I'd, is he actually a free agent? Because that's weird if he is, because he's really, he's actually really good. But I'm gonna sign him. I mean, 24 years old, quick development. Yeah, I will sign him any day of the week. I usually like the, I, I like to trade for him a lot last season. He's actually really good. Will Ty's a free agent here? Does he have slow or something? No, normal. He has insane stats for a tight end. All right. Well, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna trade some people now. You all probably knew what was gonna happen, but I was gonna get the Jets first rounder at some point. So Tavon Austin and John Sullivan will get that done. Connor Barwin, Andrew Whitworth, and a third rounder for Keenan Allen and a sixth rounder. I moved Mark Barron to a strong safety, and I'm trading him, Lance Dunbar, and this Christian dude for the Browns first rounder. Robert Woods, Roger Saffold, and a second rounder for Ryan Shazier and a fifth rounder. And I think I'm going to make a trade right back with the Steelers. Cody Davis something long anchor. I've never even heard of that guy before. And I think you're, this last guy's name is Josh Reynolds for David DeCastro. That trade makes so much sense. You guys don't even know. So remember when I said that Tremaine Johnson might make a lot of money? Yeah, his cap hit was like 16 million which is ridiculous, so I'm trading him and Ethan Westbrooks for the Burs, Bears, the Burs? For the Bears first rounder. This trade makes a lot of sense too, so I'm giving the Raiders these three guys. Honestly, I don't know their names. Fox, Thompson, and Hemingway for Rodney Hudson. For some reason, the Broncos were interested in Walker. Is there any like Tyrone something Walker? I don't know, but I'm just trading him straight up for Shane Ray. He, Shane Ray isn't the greatest overall, but better than whoever. We're going to have it right outside linebacker, and I'd I just realized that I still have Robert Quinn to trade. Okay, nice. <laughs> Robert Quinn, oh, Ma Malcolm, Ma oh, I always forget this guy's name. Something Brown and something Williams. Jeez, I'm horrible with names in this video, but this is all for the Bills first rounder. This is what the team looks like for the first season. I think this team's really good. I definitely think, actually, I don't know. I was going to say, I think it has playoff potential, but this division is rough because the Seahawks always play really well and the Cardinals are rather unpredictable. They play decently some seasons and pretty badly other seasons. The 49ers are usually pretty trash, but the Rams, um, normally, I don't really know how the Rams do in Sim. I think, actually, I'm pretty sure that they do well most of the time. I feel like they normally make the playoffs. I don't know, though. Anyway, this is the team. I think it looks really good. Didn't change all that much on the offense, really. I mean, we kept Jared Goff, of course, kept Todd Gurley, Sammy Watkins, Cooper Cup. We added Keenan Allen, which is a nice addition. Uh, didn't really do all that much to the O-line. I mean, we just got a little bit younger on the left side, like... Rodney Hudson is a bit younger than Andrew Whitworth. I mean, I think he's like seven years younger, but still, uh, yeah, he's still younger. We upgraded a lot in left guard. Uh, David DeCastro is younger than Roger Saffold, I'm pretty sure, and he is like 10 overall. No, more than that, like 15-ish overall points higher. I didn't really, we didn't really touch this side of the O-line. I mean, we traded jo or John Sullivan. Yeah, that's who was there. Rob Havenstein is still here, and what's your name? Jamon Brown is still here. I actually, are you left? No, you're right guard. Yeah, hold on, let me change this quick. Because if I don't, then the sack totals will be all funky if I don't change it. Because it would actually look like he let up like no sacks then. I don't know why Madden does that, but it messes up if you don't actually make him in the right position. So let me actually make him a left guard. There we go. You still have run blocker. I don't think that would have changed. Yeah, okay. You still have run blocker. We're good. We got Gerald Everett starting at the at tight end here over Tyler Higby just to see what goes on. Tyler Higby didn't have a development, did he? No, he did not. But Gerald Everett, I don't think you do either. Pretty sure you're just normal. Yeah, but you are still very good. Maybe you can develop. And then here's the defense. I want to say we upgraded because I think we just looking at the at the letter grades, it looks better than it did before. I think there were a couple C's here earlier. That was also because for some reason this was in a 4-3, so both the defensive tackles weren't very good. But I, I shifted Michael Brockers over to nose tackle because I'm pretty sure that's where he actually plays. And Dominic Easley and Aaron Donald are going to be on the edge with, um, what's your first name again? I forgot. Samson. Okay, Samson. I'm just gonna call you. I'm just gonna call you that. Well, Samson and Shane Ray uh, being edge rushers there with the with the outside linebacker positions, of course. And Ryan Chazier and Alec Ogletree are the two middle linebackers. I think this defense also has a four four in it, which is kind of cool. So that means this guy is going to play. I just signed him. His name Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Carruthers. I think that's who that is. I don't know. He's not horrible. He's actually really strong. 
So he's a decent backup. He will come in a couple plays probably. And then the safeties are very good. These will probably stay the same this entire rebuild. Jalen Collins will probably stay on the team this whole time. Same, maybe Nikel Roby Coleman will stay. I think you're only like 25. Yeah, you're rather young and you're actually a really good nickel corner. And then uh, Kayvon Webster, right? Did I remember that correctly? Hey, Kayvon Webster, I'm not sure where he's going to be because he is 26 years old, which, is, which isn't which like, is you know that old, but he will start regressing by the end of this. But anyway, yeah, here's the team. I think it's decent. I'm going to change the XP sliders, make sure all the settings are correct, and I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. At the midseason mark, we are 7-0. Okay, I thought this team was decent, but not unbeatable. Okay, well, that's awesome. I'm sure we're leading the division. Yeah, all right. Uh, but the Cardinals and the Seahawks are playing very well, too. Five and two for each of them. If we can go undefeated, I'm not... I, I said it, now it's not going to happen. Um, but anyway, team looks like it's playing decently. I don't know why I even said that. Obviously, they're playing well. 7-0, seven, seven oh, that's insane. But Todd Gurley's confident, which is nice. I'm surprised more people aren't confident, considering we are undefeated so far. Check out the defense, though. Um, trying to look for a lot of experience. John Johnson has 6.6. .6. That's not bad. Jalen Collins has 5.1. That's cool. Um, yeah, the, not really too much more to say. This team is awesome. Sammy Watkins has 7.7. That's cool. All right, had no, I just did not expect that to happen at all. <laughs> I gotta make sure to show you guys. I didn't mean to click on that. I gotta make sure to show you guys the sketch. I'll just show you now, just so you y'all don't think I'm fishy or whatever. I didn't cheat. I, I have absolutely no reason to cheat. No forest wins. We just won all these games. Put up, putting up a lot of points there, too. That's awesome. Anyway, let me uh, bring back some players. I think Lamarcus Joyner's there. Yeah, he's the top free agent or top impending free agent. I want him. I want Sammy Watkins. Uh, Nikel Roby Coleman I'll probably offer a contract to. Dominic Easley, I'm not sure. I think I'll hold off on him. And if he got like a really good amount of sacks, then I'll bring him back. But if he didn't, and if he just played averagely, um, I won't bring him back. But Lamarcus Joyner is is resigning with us, which is nice. Sammy Watkins, oh, like signing to your thirty? Why not? Doesn't really matter. But I'll sign him till he's thirty. He is coming back to the team. And Nikel Roby Coleman, I'll do the same thing. I'll sign you to your thirty. Actually, a really good nickel corner, five foot eight, small little guy, but he's he's actually nice in that in that nickel corner spot. Of course, like I said, like four times. But yeah, we resigned everybody. We're having an insane season. I'm gonna scout these players, and I'll see you guys at the end of the season. It's about to be the end of the season now. Let's see what happened. I'm actually really anxious to see. Did we go undefeated? 14 and two. No, at week 15 or whenever I stopped to see who won the Heisman, we were 13 and 0. We went one and two to end the season. Oh man, I really wanted to go undefeated. That would have been awesome. We almost won every game in the preseason, but then we went on this really nice win streak. How many games did we end up winning in a row? We won 13 games in a row, then we lost to the Seahawks, and we beat the Titans and lost to the 49ers. Wow, we got destroyed by the 49ers. What was that? So close to an undefeated season there. There's those two games, if we could have just played a little better. But I'm not complaining at all. 14-2. and two. That's an insane first season to have in a rebuild. I'm really surprised about that. Jared Goff, pretty good season. A lot of interceptions, I must say, but 3,800 yards, 34 touchdowns. I feel like this is kind of what he's on pace for in real life. I'm actually not even sure about that. I feel like the touchdowns and the yardage looks all right. I feel like he won't throw this many interceptions, though. I don't know. Rushing. How did Todd Gurley do? 1,587 yards, 9 touchdowns. Really good. 7 fumbles, though. I have to get that up for sure. I have to get his carrying up for sure. But Jeremy Langford, 10 touchdowns. Not bad at all. No fumbles, either. Receiving, Sammy Watkins and Keenan Allen both got over 1,000 yards, with Keenan Allen almost getting 1,100. Sammy Watkins had 11 touchdowns. Gerald Everett had 9. Cooper Cup did all right. Only had 40 catches, though, with 5 touchdowns. Blocking, was this decent? We have, like, no offensive linemen. You can see them all on this page. But very, very good in the blocking department. That's cool to see. I don't think I messed up any of the um, any of the positions, so I think that is all legit stats. Defensively, though, Ryan Shazier, 135 tackles. I see that. Pretty good season there. One interception, too, I think. Sacks, though, 17 and a half from Aaron Donald and 14 from Dominic Easley. I think he actually might get a contract for that then. Tackles for loss, 14 from Aaron Donald, 10 from Ryan Carruthers. He actually had more than Michael Brockers did, but Brockers had eight and a half sacks. Interceptions, how was this? Four from Kayvon Webster, three from Lamarcus Joyner, two from Shane Ray. Why would... Okay, maybe he is playing some kind of coverage because he only had three sacks. I don't know. It's actually pretty good, though. Is he a coverage guy? I don't think so. Can I see his stats? Actually, can I don't think he has good coverage. Yeah, he has horrible coverage. All right. John Johnson had two interceptions, and Ryan Chazier had one. This is a good season. I'm really surprised how this turned out. Touchdowns, we did not get any. Let me show you guys. Actually, I did show you guys that we didn't cheat already. Never mind. I was going to show you that, but I already did that. We were 16th on offense. Defense must have been, like, top-notch then if we did this well. Third. That makes some sense. 
MVP, anywhere up here. Jared Goff, I see it number six, but Drew Brees wins it. I wonder if that means he'll get re-signed. Probably not, which makes no sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Are you just going to let the MVP go and the Offensive Player of the Year for the NFC go? I don't know. Jared Goff comes in seventh on that list, too. Defensive Player of the Year does go to Aaron Donald. That's cool. Ryan Shazier and Kayvon Webster. Kayvon Webster actually made it. Shane Ray made it up there, too. All right, I'll take it. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Cooper Cup is he on here. Gerald Everett's right there, and Cooper Cup is number nine. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Anybody? John Johnson. All right. Best Quarterback. I actually didn't want to search through that, but Jared Goff came in third. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I am really surprised about this season. That has been insane. Let's check out the experience. 28K from Jared Goff is quite a bit. 49,000 from Sammy Watkins. That looks like a Pro Bowl appearance to me. And he got superstar development from that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. The wide receivers might actually not have to be messed with at all this entire rebuild, which is cool. Uh, Rob Havenstein has a lot of experience. Did he make the Pro Bowl? He didn't make the Pro Bowl. No development, though. That would have been nice if he could have gotten something. Uh, but the team looks super, super, uh, super good right now with all the XP. Not that much on the defensive side. I mean, Kayvon Webster is 17k. Did he make the Pro Bowl? Yeah, he did make the Pro Bowl. Okay. Well, that's sweet. This team played super well, so I'm going to spend all this, and I'll see you guys in the game. This is what the team looks like going into the first playoff game. Uh, yeah, a lot of players are confident. Makes a lot of sense. A lot of players went up nicely. Jared Goff is up to an 89, and so is Rob Havenstein. He is up to an 89 overall, which is actually a really solid overall. So he's definitely staying on the team the rest of this rebuild. That's pretty much non-negotiable. Here's what the defense looks like. I don't think uh, Samson played much. Let me check out his stats. I feel like with this scheme, he doesn't get all that much playing time. 34 tackles. Yeah, it doesn't look like he played much. I think he got subbed out most of the time, which isn't really a problem. If that happens again, I might try to, because uh, I actually want to try to draft an outside linebacker. I'm going to make sure he plays right out and then have Shane Ray get subbed out. That sounds good to me. I probably won't worry about left outside linebacker too much this rebuild just because it seems like he's getting subbed out. But anyway, John Johnson went up to an 86 overall. This team looks nice. So let's advance the week. See who we have to take on. I just want to go straight to the Super Bowl. I mean, we're going to win. I don't think, okay, these earlier games, I don't think I'm going to hop into because it kind of just drags on takes some time it's not really all that interesting to hop into these games i'll hop into them if we make the super bowl and in the last season i'll try to hop into all of them so let's just advance to next week did we pick up a win please tell me we won we lost 28 to 21 i'll go through the stats here though just because i didn't hop into the game but we did lose uh nope probably go to playoff schedule for that or can i get to postseason I actually can 21 to 28 how do we do the vikings had 400 offensive yards on us that's a lot all right, well, Case Keenum had actually a really good game. Jared Goff had a pretty horrible game. Rushing, Dalvin Cook did well. Todd Gurley ran the ball efficiently. Jarek McKinnon and Bishop Sankey each had a touchdown. It was actually another rushing touchdown down there. Who's that from? Jeremy Langford got one. All right. Receiving Kyle Rudolph led the game and catches. Sammy Watkins had a touchdown, though. Uh, tackles, Ryan Chazier had 14. Shane Wright, 11. And John Johnson had 10. I just lost my, thought, my train of thought for a second. Terrence Newman got a pick. The ageless man. One sack from Aaron Donald, and he also had a tackle for loss, I see. But there's two from Linval Joseph. Okay, it's a bit rough that we ended up losing, but, I mean, we made it this far already, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, anyway, how'd the division do? I didn't even take notice. Seahawks 12-4, and four, Cardinals 10-5-1, 49ers 5-10-1. All right, well, anyway, I'll see you guys in the offseason. In free agency here, we have to bring back Jalen Collins, and I'm definitely going to do that. Corey Harkey, I signed him. I'm pretty sure he actually used to be on the Rams. I'm not going to negotiate with him, because I can probably just find... A, uh, a rookie fullback who's just as good. Dominic Easley I am going to bring back, but I think I might trade him. Honestly, I know he had a really good season. I understand he had a good season, and my mic got unplugged for some reason. It wasn't my cord this time, because I actually have batteries in. But, uh, yeah, I know Dominic Easley did have a really good season. But considering how close we were to 14, I mean, to, I almost said 14-0, and 0, to 16-0, and 0, I think I might just try to make this team as good as I possibly can. So I think I might just try to get like better players in those positions. Jeremy Langford, I'm going to let go. All these guys over here, I'm just going to let go. Try to replace them in the draft or in free agency or something here. Anyway, though, let's step into free agency. Did that say Danny Woodhead retired, or is he a free agent? I, I just saw something about Danny Woodhead over there. But anyway, we have 35.1 mil in cap room, which is good enough to bring in someone good. They, why did the Saints let go of Drew Brees if he was the MVP? That makes no sense to me. All right, I don't think I'm going to take anybody here. It's pretty much like the same free agency season as it always is. Who's this? Justin Coleman? 
I think I've heard of this guy before. I'm not sure what team he's on, though, if I'm completely honest. Anyway, though, I'm just going to see you guys in the draft. There's nothing really to see here. We are in the draft now, so I think we have, like, the third pick. And I'm pretty sure I want a cornerback with this pick. Let me make sure he's not going to go first. I mean, the Broncos won't take him. That's easy. If the Broncos take a cornerback, that's stupid. Okay, the Colts might actually draft him, so maybe I'll have to trade up. I'm not entirely sure yet. Let me just figure some stuff out quick. It took me some time, but I finally was able to get this trade to work because I think the Colts might draft the guy I want. So I'm giving them a 28th pick in the first round. Is his name Jamon Brown? Something like that. <laughs> and a fourth rounder next year. I'm really bad with names today. I don't understand why. <laughs> anyway, though, let's take this cornerback. I thought the Colts were going to take this guy because there's this wide receiver here that looks really good. Okay, well, let me explain something. They need a cornerback and a wide receiver. Those are both in their top five. So I don't want to risk this guy going, Howard Parsons, because he looks phenomenal. 43940 is really good. B plus man, B zone, B minus press all look really good. So I wasn't sure if they were going to draft him or if they were, or, or if they were going to draft Jordan, <laughs> Jordan Collier. So I'm just going to go with Howard Parsons here. 84 overall with quick development. Okay, what a nice pick to have there. That guy is phenomenal. All right, good to know. I think with this pick, I honestly might go with this wide receiver. Let me just figure some more stuff out quickly, and then I'll come back. I'm actually going to trade down this pick because I don't think the Lions are going to draft the wide receiver I want. So I'm just going to do a trade like this. See what I see what I can take here. The Bengals are actually offering some nice stuff there. It's a first next year, and the eighth pick this year. Ooh, that's a first and a second this year and a second next year. That's two firsts. No, I think I'm going to go with... Oh, man. That looks so good, but I don't want the 21st pick because... Hold on. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this. I'm going to go with the Browns because I'm going to get a super early pick next year and have a nice second rounder. Yeah, I'm going with that. That actually looks really nice to me because there's some late first round guys that I kind of want because I have the 5th and the 10th pick. I might be able to mess with the 10th pick in order to get somebody else that I want. Anyway, hopefully the... Oh, God, I didn't even think of this. Hopefully this team doesn't take him. Oh, no. The Browns might actually take him. Oh. Oh, I didn't think this through. The Browns are going to take him. There's no chance they don't. Oh, no. Should I just cheese them and trade down? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I think I might just cheese the Browns. I'm sorry, Ninja Cheese. If you guys don't know, he's one of my subscribers and he's a Browns fan. So, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheese him just a little because I think they're going to take him. Yep, they're, they're going to take him. This game is stupid. I'm giving the Browns my 27th pick in the first round. Not even the pick that I just traded down for or traded up for, whatever. And my backup middle linebacker, who they had green interest in, by the way, for their pick right now. I'm sorry. I am really sorry to the Browns, but I'm going to abuse the game mechanics because I can. That was such a... That was so cheesy. Anyway, this guy's on my team. 79 overall with Superstar. I'm really sorry, Browns. I just made you miss out on this, man. 95 speed, 85 catching. Yeah, he's going to be the slot receiver for us. I'm sorry, Cooper Cup fans. But I think you can kind of get behind me going with that dude. And I think here I'm actually going to go with some guy that was supposed to be a mid-round talent. But I know he has superstar development, so I don't think it's much of a reach. So, Ross Hodge. Pretty sure this guy is superstar development. He's really talented. Decently fast for being a pass rusher, which is nice. 4 6 4 isn't bad. He's really strong, really agile, so I'm going to go with him. 80 overall superstar development. This has been a very good draft so far. 87 speed. Do you have decent coverage at all? Zone coverage 75. Okay, it could definitely be worse because it seemed as if Shane Ray actually played in coverage for a little bit last season. So. It's not bad having 65 uh, zone like that, but yeah, very good player there. Now let me see who I want. I'm going to trade away this pick because I have some late round players that I want. And if they go, it's not really the biggest deal in the world. Maybe I can get like a decent late round pick or maybe I'll just get some stuff for next year. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to get some stuff for next year. I think I saw a first rounder. I'm actually going to go with this one because that's a second rounder this year and a fifth this year. And the Saints won't have Drew Brees. I don't know if they drafted a quarterback. I don't think they had that good of a pick. Yeah, so I don't know if they drafted a quarterback. Maybe they just now, did now. Who knows? But the 21st pick is what I have right now. I think this center might actually still be here. Because that would be nice. If he is, I'm going with him. He actually is still here. Colton Weaver. He has an insane combine. He's very fast. A 5-40-yard com or a five, uh, 40 yard dash, 5.0, is really good. He's super strong, very agile. He's a very good player. Let's go with him. 
78 overall, normal development. He's going to come in and play center for us, I think for sure, because he has 89 strength with 70 speed and 80 acceleration is insane for a center with very good blocking stats. I'm okay with that. With this pick, I'm going with Andy Ogle. He's a late first round talent. He is very strong as well. He's also really fast. He has actually an insane combine. He's in top eight of everything there. And he has good top three skills, so let's go with him. 77 overall, normal development. I normally don't draft O-linemen in the first round, but these guys actually looked really good, so I figured I would take them. But again, another very solid O-lineman. I'm going to trade this pick down, um, hopefully maybe for like a first rounder next year. Is that possible? There's some second rounders next year. Third rounder this year and a second next year from the Seahawks and a fourth this year. That's some insane value. Wow, it's the same thing there from the Saints. I'm going to actually take it from the Saints. That's two second rounders next year from the Raiders. I'm going to actually just make it simple and do that one. Hold on. Is there anything better? No, I honestly, the Saints looks too good because that second rounder is probably going to be pretty good next year. So I'm going to take that one. Now I have a third and a fourth rounder. I think I'm going to trade down the third and then take a player with my fourth, I think. So let's trade down this third that we have. It's very late. They actually made it really far in the playoffs, and that means... Uh, but let's trade this one down a second next year for a fourth rounder. Yep, that's easy. Who offers a second for a fourth? I don't know. The Saints actually offered some nice stuff there too for their own pick back again. I don't know. This fourth rounder I'm definitely going to take. Actually, it's later than the one I already had. Maybe my player's here. Probably not. Yeah, he's actually not here. Late fifth rounder. Um, I don't feel like getting a lot more picks, so I'm just going to take these players now. Lucas Gillespie. He looks decent, you know. Not really amazing. He has decent stats, though, and he is actually very strong. So let's see what he's all about. 72 overall. He is really good, though. He's not going to start, but he's he's definitely really good depth. With this next pick here, I'm just going to keep taking my players down the list. The Eagles have two back-to-back -back picks after this. So this one, let's go with Antoine Rudd. He's actually really fast. 4 7 40 isn't bad. He is very strong. Decently agile with his three cone there. Pretty good stats. I don't know. What is he? What are you all about? 73 overall, normal development. Probably won't get starting time. I don't think he's good enough for that. I might try to trade for a different middle linebacker, but I'm not entirely sure yet. But he's not bad for like depth purposes again. <clears throat> but with this next pick, we are just going to draft whoever is next on my draft board. Who do we got here? We got a right guard and a left tackle. Hopefully we will be able to get both of these guys. Early sixth rounder. What are you? Late sixth rounder. Okay, so I should be able to get both of these guys here. Langford Buck. Doesn't look horrible, has decent top three skills, not really the strongest. <clears throat> 12th, uh, he's ranked 12th of right guards. I don't know if that's just right guards or if it's guards in general, I don't know, in, in bench press. That's not horrible, but let's take him. 73 overall. <clears throat> Sorry I keep coughing, I don't know why, but my, my throat just keeps getting really dry. But those that, that player wasn't very, wasn't very good, but it's okay. And with the last pick of this draft, I'm going to go with Franklin Green. He's actually really good because he doesn't have the best combine. He's very he's very slow, but he has an insane bench press, and he has decent top three skills. So what are you all about, my man? 76 overall. 61 speed. That's rather horrible, but he is ranked 33rd in the entire draft. We drafted him 156. Not bad at all. Very strong. 91 strength. That was actually a really successful draft. I will de I'm will. i actually really, really happy with that draft. Alec Ogletree, Samson, and a second rounder for Chris Jones. Well, that was simple. Cooper Cup straight up for Nico Siragusa. I said I was going to try to make this team as uh, as good as I possibly could, and that's what I'm doing here with uh, with this trade. Kayvon Webster, a second and a third next year. The, the third is next year for Luke Keekley. This is the team for the second season. I mean, if the last team went 14-2... This team should definitely at least make the playoffs. It is so much better. We upgraded the offensive line pretty nicely. I mean, Nico Siragusa is very good. Our center is much better than the center we had before. And Rob Havenstein just went up to an 89. It's the same player, obviously, but he just went up very nicely. The whole team developed well. Um, what's your first name? Jordan? Isn't like Jordan, but spelled weird? Yeah, you're actually a very good slot receiver. Very, very fast. Uh, check out the defense now, though. Luke Keekley, of course, is, is just going to do keekley like things. Cornerbacks got a bit better with this guy. I forgot your first name. Uh, Howard Parsons with quick development, 84 overall. What a stud. We got Chris Jones on the left side now of the D-line. This team is just better than it was last season, is very simply put. We also, got, <clears throat> we also got Hodge over here, who should do decently over there. I hope so. Shane Wright played well at that position last season. So let's see what happens here. I really hope we can. We should at least be able to make the playoffs. If we don't, this just proves that EA is, is rather rather dumb. You know, considering last season, this is a bit of an off year. We are five and three. 
That's all right though. Taking on the six and one Seahawks, so definitely looks like we are at least second in the division. And that's the case. We are second. The 49ers are 0 and seven, and we just lost to the Bears. All right. Well, hopefully we can actually win this game against the Seahawks. That would be very nice if we could. But anyway, let me bring back some players. Obviously, Aaron Donald is here. He is going to want a very fat contract, but it will get done. Todd Gurley, Ryan Shazier, Rob Havenstein, Shane Ray, I'll probably bring back too. That's actually not even that much. Honestly, I thought there were going to be more people. But, ooh, we actually don't have all that much money. We should be able to get this one done, bringing, bringing Aaron Donald back for seven more years. What a contract. What, what is that, $97.2 million total? Holy crap. All right, well, Todd Gurley, I will lock you up until you are 30 years old, hopefully. That is a good offer. All right. As if, I mean, it doesn't really matter, you know, how long these contracts are because it's not, I'm not going to do six more seasons of this. Anyway, same thing with Ryan Chazier, though. Actually, he's going to be 31 by the time he gets off the team. Rob Havenstein is going to be 32. Is keep progressively getting older. He's coming back, though. And Shane Ray, why not bring him back? He'll be 31 by the time he's able to leave, unless I trade him, which might actually happen. Who knows? But we actually were able to re-sign all the people we wanted, which is nice. So let's check out the experience on the team. Maybe some players are doing well, and I can spend that now. Like the wide receiver? Oh, he actually has 13K. That's nice. I will spend this on the wide receiver. Maybe get him up to like an 82 or an 83. His awareness is rather low. I'll bring that up. His catching traffic is very low. I'll just spend this all on awareness and catching traffic. I think that's the best here. 83 overall, very good. I think that's what Cooper Cup was. So he's already up to that overall, which is nice. It looks like he's playing pretty well. He's actually an 84. I don't know why that's different when you actually click on him, but whatever. Defensively though, anyone have over our, <laughs> over 10K? This guy's 14K, I actually wasn't expecting that. I will spend this. Maybe get him up to like an 85. That would be huge. I'm just gonna spend this all on play rec and awareness. Be nice if I can get him both to an 80, but I'm not going to be able to. Let's see what I can get him to. 78, 79, 80, nope, okay, almost. 86 overall at the midseason mark for that outside linebacker. This is awesome. That guy is going to be such a beast after this season. Uh, this guy only has 9.78 only. That's actually a lot for the midseason mark. Okay, I'm liking how the team is looking. So anyway, I'm going to spend this or all these scouting points, and I'll see you at the end of the season. We made the playoffs. As you can see there, a wild card going 12-4. and four. The NFC must have been very good. Anyway, yeah, we're 12-4. and four. The Seahawks are 11-5. and five. We actually were able to come out on top on that division. The Cardinals went 1-8, and eight, I think, after the midseason mark. I'm pretty sure they were like 4-3 and three or something. I could be remembering remembering that wrong, though. But we went 3-1 and one in the preseason. We won, we went on a four-game win streak right away. Lost to the Seahawks. That was not the midseason mark, but we lost to them again at the midseason mark. That sucks. And we lost to the Bears. Barely beat to the 49ers in a shootout there. Okay, that was kind of analogous to the game that happened this year. Wow, okay, and we finished off the season with a solid seven-game win streak. All right, well, that kind of solidified our record. That's cool to see. Anyway, Tom Brady is the MVP. Apparently, he's still playing. That's cool. Jared Goff, 4,100 yards, 25, nope, 29 touchdowns. My fault, 14 picks. I don't know. I think I would characterize this season as a bit worse because he threw one more interception, I think, and, like, four less touchdowns. He did throw for, like, 300 more yards or 200 more yards or something, but I don't know. I think he did better last season. Todd Gurley, though, did much better this season. 15 touchdowns, 1,500 yards, and three fumbles. That's not bad at all. Haynes Weems, our backup running back, who was a rookie, had 11 touchdowns, three fumbles. Jared Goff actually only fumbled once. I don't know if that counts, like, strip sacks and stuff. I'm not actually sure at all. Keenan Allen, though, gets over 1,200 yards with nine touchdowns. Sammy Watkins gets 943 yards with four touchdowns. Gerald Everett gets 802 with eight touchdowns. And our rookie receiver does not do that well. It looks like the third receiver in this scheme doesn't do all that much. That's okay, though. We are winning games. It's not really the worst thing in the world. Sacks, we only let up nine all season. That is huge. Defensively, I see Aaron Donald. I already see his sack total. Okay, well, anyway, Luke Keekley probably won Defensive Player of the Year. 142 tackles, six interceptions. That's a bit insane, but our backup, or no, not our backup, our right outside linebacker got 114 tackles. Where's Ryan Chazier? Is he not playing in this? He had 15 tackles. Lovely. I don't know what's up with this scheme then. I don't know how this works. Whatever. I'm going to keep him on the team. Aaron Donald, 12 tackles for loss. That's nice to see. Sacks, 21 and a half from Aaron Donald. Only nine and a half, actually nine and a half from Dominic Easley. My bad. I thought that was going to be Chris Jones. Dominic Easley is just a sack machine. I might actually move Chris Jones to backup defensive tackle. No, I actually don't really want to do that. I don't know what's going to happen, but this team is playing very well here. Luke Keekley with six picks. Howard Parsons, the rookie cornerback we have with four. Josh, nope, John Johnson, my fault. Josh Johnson, is he on the is he on the Packers? I think he's a rookie on the Packers. Josh Jones. Oh, no. One of those guys. I think Josh Jones might be the guy I'm thinking of. Who knows? Nickel, or Nickel, however you want to pronounce it. I think I've always said Nickel. Nickel, Roby Coleman, two interceptions. LaMarcus Joyner had one. Artaves Blackshear, who was some random rookie assigned. Had one interception, and Shane Ray keeps getting interceptions, even though he has really bad coverage stats. 
Uh, check out touchdowns, though. Do we get any? We got two, actually. John Johnson and Blake Countess. He probably recovered a fumble. All right. Well, anyway, we were 10th on offense. What about defense? How was this? Top 10, I'm guessing. Fifth. Yeah, okay. We actually had better stats this season than last year, but we had a better record last year. Who knows? None of our guys come in MVP running, but Nick Stanley... Man, the Saints did draft a quarterback. I think I have their first round pick this year. That's all right. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Todd Gurley comes in fifth. That's actually kind of cool. Cooper, not Cooper Cup. Jared Goff is not on this. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald again. I'm surprised Luke Keekley didn't win that. Deion Jones is actually really close there too. Offensive Rookie of the Year obviously goes to that guy, but our backup running back actually comes in third. Jordan Collier, who is our wide receiver, comes in fifth. Vincent Hamilton. Maybe that's our fullback. I'm not even sure. He comes in sixth. Defensive Rookie of the Year does go to Ross Hodge. That's sweet. That's our outside linebacker. Howard Parsons comes in second. Awesome. So this team looks like it got a lot of experience just based on those awards. Let's check it out, though. Jared Goff, 19K. Todd Gurley, 27K. A lot of people over 20K here. Keenan Allen, Sammy Watkins, Nico Siragusa, Gerald Everett, all those guys are back. Oh, no, that was our fullback. Our fullback got over 20K. And he has quick development. Do you make the Pro Bowl? What a man, he made the Pro Bowl at being a 62 overall, what a god. Defensively though, our outside linebacker has 41,000 more experience. That is insane, Aaron Donald, 19k, I don't even think I can do much with that. Our rookie corner has 18k, okay, this is going to be fun to spend, so I'm going to do this, and then spend my coach experience, and then we'll get into the game. Here's a look at the upgraded team. Looks absolutely amazing, Jared Goff is up to a 90, Todd Gurley is up to a 98 with confidence, that looks really good. On the defense here, who went up significantly? This guy is a 93 overall. That is awesome. With superstar development, he's 6'5", 2 with 87 speed. Holy crap. That guy is so good. 22 years old. This team's awesome. I really enjoy this team a lot. This is one of the better rebuild, or this is actually one of the better teams I've had in a rebuild, I think. So I'm actually going to do the same thing I did last year and just sim through the playoff games because I don't really feel like sitting through them right now. But next season, if we make the playoffs, which we 100% should, if not, that's just... A bit ridiculous, but I am going to do one more season, even if, like, let's just say we win the Super Bowl this year. I will still do another season next year to try to go back-to-back. -back. I don't know. Bolton Sim next week. Can we take down the Seahawks, please? Let's beat the Seahawks. Let me get a playoff win. We lost in the playoffs again. Maybe I should just start going into the games, but we kind of got destroyed. 41-24? to 24? Is that what that said? I kind of like just simming through the games, though, because it, it just it saves me some time. I don't know. Going into the games really doesn't do all that much. It doesn't really... I don't, know, I don't think it's all that interesting. Anyway... Postseason, let's see the game. 24 to 41, I was right. We got decimated this game. We had more offensive yards, though. Russell Wilson just destroyed us through the air. He got sacked twice, though, but four touchdowns, one interception. Jared Goff had a relatively clean game, but um, what was the completion percentage? 65. That's not even actually that bad. But yeah, he had a relatively clean game. Can't really blame it on him. Rushing Chris Carson, he always stays on the Seahawks and does super well. He actually did really well. Todd Gurley did well. Haynes Weems had a touchdown. Jared Goff had a touchdown. Receiving, Sammy Watkins had a very strange game. Didn't have many yards on six catches. He had exactly six yards to catch. Jimmy Graham had a touchdown. Doug Baldwin had three. I wish he can do that next week. I have him on my fantasy team. KJ Wright had 15 tackles. Ross Hodge had 14. Bobby Wagner had 10 sacks. Any? Two, one from Chris Jones and Luke Keekley. Luke Keekley, I got a sack. All right. The interception came from LaMarcus Joyner, too. Okay, well, sadly, we, we were not able to take down the Seahawks, but they're a bit of a god squad when it comes to rebuilds. Anyway, though, let's just go to the draft. Actually, no, the offseason. I forgot about the offseason. I'm going to send to the Super Bowl, see who has superstar development, and then I'll see you guys in the offseason. We are in free agency here, and the Jaguars won the Super Bowl? Oh, they beat the Eagles. That sucks. Anyway, we are pretty much in free agency here. There's nobody there that I want to bring back. All the undrafted free agents and stuff that I signed, I don't really want them again. 26.25 mil is not bad. Anybody here that I want? Odell. Oh, my God. And David Johnson. I don't need David Johnson. I think you guys can understand why I'm not going to go for him because Todd Gurley is, you know, pretty much just as good now with his overall. But Odell is on the team. I am going big for him. I need to draft, not draft, I need to get Odell on my team. I'm going to probably overpay for him just because I want to make sure I get him 105 points. If he doesn't come on the team for 105 points, that is someone just stolen from me. Jason Verrett is here too. I think I might go for Jason Verrett. It would be nice to get a very solid number two corner. I will try this. How much does he want? 95 okay i will go a little bit above and hopefully i get him if they actually take into consideration like how good your team is jason Verrett should come on the team because of how well we've been playing i mean i guess not in the postseason but everywhere else we've been playing super well okay well hopefully we got both of those guys this would make this rebuild so much better 
if we can get Odell and Jason Verrett. Why would the Chargers not sign Jason Verrett? I guess because they do have some very good, <laughs> they have some very good corners, and we got them both. Oh my god, look at this team. Sammy Watkins is going to slide down into the slot. I know that for a fact. Oh my lord, this team looks unbeatable. This is def definitely the best team I think I've had in the past two Maddens. I can't recall anyone being better. Actually, we don't have the best left outside linebacker, but he doesn't play anyway, so it's not even really much of a point. I guess I'll go into the draft, try to find some people. I don't even know, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the draft. We are in the draft now, and I think I have like the 14th pick, and then somewhere in like the 20s. I think I have my own pick down there too. So the Ravens have the first overall pick. There are actually some very good players in this draft, like early first round guys. Let's just see if he gets taken. There's a corner and a safety look amazing. And I think that was the safety. Let's see if this corner goes. I think that's the corner. Well, that was quick. Those guys both looked very good. I don't really know if there's anybody in this particular juncture that I want. But there's almost no reason for me not to take anyone because I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to do any trades next season. I am really content with where the team is. Let's go with this guy, Langford Armstrong. He looks really good. He's not the fastest in the world, but he is actually really agile. And yeah, that's pretty much it. He's pretty strong. Decent vertical jump. Let's go with him. 77, normal development. We reached on this guy apparently, but he is very good. He's ranked 44th. That was kind of unexpected. It's actually, a, I feel like I've never seen that guy's, that face before. Usually the faces are, are very reused, but <laughs> I feel like I've never seen that guy's before. I don't know. It doesn't really matter who we draft here because I don't think they're going to play anyway. Let's go with, I'm actually going to go with an end here that might come in at D-Tackle if he's decent. Going with this guy, George Zero, Zero, Zero I don't know how to pronounce it, I don't know. He's really strong, he's a 3-4 kind of end, so we can probably slide over to D-Tackle decently well. Let's go with him. 78 was slow. This guy has slow development, but his stats are insane. 295 pounds, 6 foot 4, running with 77 speed that's really scary <laughs> but maybe he'll slide in to uh d tackle i'm not even sure though because dominic easily has been having a very good rebuild for me right now uh so yeah i don't really think i'm gonna waste any of your guys' time anymore so i'll come back to you guys if i draft someone amazing but if not i'm just going to cut away probably to the start of the next season like i said i'm not going to change the team at all i really like where it is i think this team is definitely able to make the playoffs odell helps out a lot because he is you know probably like top three in this game as an overall i'm sure there's a couple of receivers that are 99 i don't think julio and antonio brown will still be a 99 but i feel like mike evans might be and freaking Devonte adams Devonte adams always goes up to like a 97 98 like in these i don't know but odell of course is is there he's just doing odell like things i said that about luke keekley earlier it's the same sort of thing and it's just kind of true this o-line can be slightly upgraded with the center but this guy is good like i don't really see the point of upgrading him centers really don't impact your team all that much but the uh outterior uh, outterior exterior guys i don't know if i'm good at english i'm a math major you know you know how it goes but <laughs> uh yeah these guys are very good rob havenstein is the worst guy other than our center and he's an 89 so that says a lot about our line there receiving core is insane I already kind of touched on that tight end's good the only other thing I would really change would be Shane Ray, but like he, like I mentioned earlier, he doesn't get much playing time, so I don't really see that as a... I don't really see see it necessary to, to change him. But yeah, this team's very good. Oh, also, I should mention, I moved this rookie to defensive tackle because he goes up to an 81, and he's really good. So I figured I would just do that. And without further ado, I'm just going to sim all the way through this season where we are we are going to be 16-0. I think I can, I can feel it. This is going to be my first time I've ever went 16-0. Just letting you guys know, I'm calling it now. So yeah, I was I was about six games wrong, but we went ten and six. I don't know how we've we've gotten worse records as this rebuilds went on, and maybe because other teams are just getting better. I don't know, but we are in the wild card game, ten and six, taking on the ten five and one Cowboys. Hold on, I was make I was just looking over to make sure I was recording, but we didn't even come in first this time. The Seahawks did; they went thirteen and three. I think the 49ers had one win, and the Cardinals had five or six. I think it might have been six. I don't know. I didn't look clearly enough. Anyway, three and nope, two and two. I was used to saying three and something in the preseason or three and one in the preseason because I think last two seasons that's what happened. Regular season won the opening two games, lost the next two. Very high scoring games though. Then we beat the 49ers and the Cardinals, lost to the Seahawks, beat the Browns, destroyed the Seahawks 56 to nothing. Holy crap. Lost to the Cardinals, destroyed the Steelers, lost to the Falcons, beat the Buccaneers, lost to the Bengals, then won the last two games. I'm surprised we beat the 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 um Seahawks and the Steelers by that much. I just completely blanked on those teams for some reason. Jared Goff, very good season. That's an insane season. Three interceptions all year with 31 touchdowns <clears throat> and nearly 4,000 yards. Very, very good season. That's the best season he's had so far. 
Rushing, though, Todd Gurley, two, nope, 22. I almost said 222 rushing touchdowns. That would have been the, okay, that's never going to happen. 22 rushing touchdowns with 1,762 yards with two fumbles. That is an insane season there. Haynes Weems, look at the man, had 600 yards rushing. That's not even bad at all with 12 touchdowns. Receiving Odell doesn't really do all that much. This is kind of weird that, okay, our receivers actually underperformed a lot, but maybe it's just the scheme. I don't know. Odell still got over 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns. Nobody else really did anything that notably. Blocking, though. That's very good. Nine sacks let up all season. I'll take it. Like I said earlier, the center doesn't really make much of a difference. He did not let up a sack all season. Good to know. Defensively, Ross Hodge had the most amount of tackles. Luke Keekley came in second. I'm surprised Luke Keekley didn't out tackle him. That's okay, though. Tackles for loss. We got 12 from Michael Brackers and 10 from our rookie D tackle. 19 and a half sacks from Aaron Donald. Okay, I think that's. I don't remember what he got the first season. I think the first season was his lowest total, but I think it was still over like 16. Chris Jones had seven. That's not bad either. Interceptions five from Luke Keekley, four from Howard Parsons, two from Ross Hodge, one from Jason Verrett and Lamarcus Joyner. Kind of sucks that Ryan Chazier kind of just got sort of benched. I don't know what's up with this scheme, but we did not get any touchdowns. This scheme confuses me a little bit. I'm just going to let it go, though. This rebuild was, has been super successful. Seventh on offense and defense. I think that looks decent. I think. Could be wrong, though, but let's check it out. How do we end up doing? Uh, that's... Okay, we were top... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Top seven. It's actually really good. The Seahawks had a really good defensive year. Yearly awards, though, I think I already saw who won MVP. It is Nick Stanley. That's actually really impressive. Todd Gurley comes in fifth. I'm surprised. Um, I almost said Deshaun Elliott. What? <laughs> I'm surprised that Jared Goff didn't make it. Those are not even close in any way. There is no way of me justifying that one. But Jared Goff does come in eighth on that. But... Wow, Todd Gurley wins Offensive Player of the Year, even though Nick Stanley won MVP. Okay, Defensive Player of the Year, Aaron Donald wins three Defensive Player player of the Years in a row. Luke Keekley comes in eighth on that one. Brian Arakpo, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see him. Offensive Rookie of the Year, don't think we have anybody notable here. Defensive Rookie of the Year, our D-Tackle actually comes in fourth, that's not bad. Best Quarterback, Jared Goff comes in fourth. Probably, he probably had the least amount of interceptions in the league, if I had to guess. Todd Gurley was the best running back. Alvin Kamara is a 99. I think he's somebody I have to start trading for soon. Best wide receiver. I don't expect to have anybody here. Actually, Odell makes it. That was it. Chris Godwin. My man. Sorry, I got I got distracted. Every time I see Chris Godwin, I just freak out a little bit because he went to Penn State. But offensive lineman, David DeCastro comes in third. I feel like our entire O-line could be here. Rodney Hudson comes in tenth. Best D-lineman goes to Aaron Donald, who probably won that the past three years, too. Best linebacker, Luke Keekley comes in fifth. Best defensive back, Howard Parsons comes in seventh. He's very good. And best kicker is Greg the Leg on this list, hopefully. He actually is. He comes in tenth. Way to go, my man. Legatron, Greg the Leg, whatever you want to call him. Check out the experience, though. It should be rather nice, if I had to guess here. Okay, that's a lot of experience for the quarterback and the running back here. That's good to know. Defensively, anybody have a substantial amount? Yeah, it looks like some people do. 21K from Hodge over there, 20K from Aaron Donald. All right, so I'll spend this along with my coach experience, then I'll see you guys in the game. I'm actually going to join this game this time. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you there. So I think this is by far the best team I've ever had in a rebuild. <clears throat> I'm not sure what uh, my best team in Madden 17 was, but I might compete with that one. I'm not even sure. But this, just from recent memory, I think this is the best one I've had. Just every part of this team is very good. Even our fullback, dude. This guy was like a 62 when I picked him up. I think I drafted him just blindly at the end of the second draft, and he is now an 80 with quick development. That's some good good development right there. But yeah, this team's insane. All the players that actually matter and play a lot are very good. Shane Ray doesn't play much, like I've noted. Did he get an interception this year? I actually didn't even check. I don't think he did. That's sad. That ruins a streak. I don't think he got an interception. So we got him this season when he had two interceptions, and then he had another one and then didn't get this one down there. Which is a little annoying. But yeah, anyway, we're going to hop into this game here. I'm not going to say a word or anything because I already mentioned the whole Q&A thing. I'm surprised I actually remembered that. I thought I was going to forget. But we are in 96 overall. They are in 92 overall. Let me put on the color rush uniforms and I'll see you guys in the game. Well, this game isn't very close. 49-3. to They got three points in the first quarter, I think. Now they have six. But I think they got three points in the first quarter and just got shut out the rest of it. Okay, I guess the way to do these uh, playoff games is by actually going into them. That makes no sense. Anyway, Jared Goff had a pretty good game. Did throw a pick, but he had two touchdowns. Oh my lord, Dak Prescott had four interceptions. He had a 5.1 rating. That is insane. Todd Gurley, okay. 200 yards pretty much, four touchdowns. Haynes, Weens, and... 
Yeah, Haynes Weems had one touchdown. We had more rushes from our backup running back than Ezekiel Elliott did. That's insane. And Dak Prescott fumbled. Holy crap, that was a bad game. Gerald Everett had a pretty crazy game. Odell had a touchdown. Only two catches, though. Defensively, Anthony Hitchens had 16 tackles. Aaron Williams had 11. And Tyrone Crawford had 10. Tackles for loss, two from David Irving. A couple sacks, one from Chris Jones and Shane Ray. Interceptions, two from Luke Keekley, one from Shane Ray and Jalen Collins and Jordan Lewis. So we have to take on the Seahawks now which is not going to be an easy task to do at all because the Seahawks are amazing and they always beat us. But I think we just destroyed them this season. I think that was this past season where we shut them out. Maybe that was last season? I don't remember. Whatever, we shut them out at some point, so hopefully we can do that again. This game has been so boring so far. It's 9-7. to We just cannot drive on the Seahawks right now. I'm pretty sure we lost. Yep, oh wow. Okay, they scored a lot of points at the end of the game and we just, the, the Seahawks have such a good defense. <clears throat> Clearly our offense just cannot do anything. Jared Goff, pretty abysmal. Same thing with Russell Wilson. The quarterbacks played very badly this game. Four, interception con four interceptions combined from them. JD McKissick got a touchdown. Todd Gurley did pretty well, actually, on the ground whenever he got a chance. Keenan Allen had a lot of catches. So did Jimmy Graham, it seems. Decent amount of yards there from both those guys. Ryan Shazier actually had a lot of tackles this game. I don't know why he randomly had so many. John Johnson had eight. So did Luke Keekley and Lamarcus Joyner down there. And tackles for loss, a couple from a handful of players. One sack from Sheldon Richardson, and then the interceptions came from Shaquille Griffin, Cam Chancellor, Luke Keekley, and Jalen Collins. Okay, so there goes our playoff run. It was pretty short. We only had one playoff win, I think, in this entire rebuild, so one of the worst postseason teams I've ever had, but in general, <laughs> one of the best teams, like, overall-wise that I've had. Okay, this is what happened at the end of last game, but when I clicked this, it actually took me back right after the game was over. Hopefully it does that again. Yeah, okay, so I can see the box score there, so that means we did lose, of course, 24-7. Pretty bad game, but this is what the team looks like. Like I mentioned a couple times already, this is one of the best teams I've ever had. Nico Siragusa is up to a 94. Oh my lord. Okay, yeah, this team's phenomenal. Not really too much more to say. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, and like I mentioned in the beginning, um, leave comments of questions that you want me to answer in a Q&A type video. I really hope I can get a decent amount to actually have, like, a relatively long video, and it isn't, like, three minutes. Um, so yeah, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.